do you need to send some simple follow-up emails after a specific event occurs in your business? Well, if so, this video is for you. We're going to be going into detail about how you can build a simple follow-up funnel inside of Airtable and Zapier, just sending a few emails uh, following an opportunity creation or something along those lines inside of your business. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, I'm Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses to get organized and automated, making them more efficient and letting owners take their time back. Now, in this video, as I said, we are going to be going into detail on how to set up a pretty simple email automation you know, follow-up. So uh, before we get into it though, if you're new to this channel and if you want to level up your Airtable and Zapier, then definitely smash that subscribe button. Don't miss out on future content that we put out. Uh, now that being said, let's just jump on into my screen here. As you see, we have an Airtable database set up with two different tables. This is a pretty simple example for a CRM, but you'll almost always have these two uh, pieces of data or data sets. Specifically, you're going to be looking at contacts and you're going to track opportunities against those contacts or rather linked to those contacts. So on the contact level, we're bringing in, uh, you know, first and last name, an email, a phone number, and then of course the linked relationship to the opportunity. And on the opportunity side, we are linking obviously to the contacts. That's the reciprocal to that link. And we're also tracking the date and time that the opportunity was created, the type of opportunity, because in many instances, a business will offer more than one product or service. And, uh, and then we have a few other uh, different things that we're tracking specifically for this email purpose, uh, for the email automation purposes. And I'll be going into detail on those. So first and foremost, why do we have opportunities separate from our, uh, you know, our actual contacts? Well, the reason for this is, as you see here in my first two, I have the same person in this example, Isaac Newton, and this person has requested information or, uh, you know, uh, stuff around our various services. So in this first case, Isaac Newton is looking to perhaps become a coaching client. And in the second case, a development client. And so we might treat these very differently. So we want to make sure that we're tracking these opportunities uniquely and keeping these uh, in two different sets of data is very helpful for that. Now, also, we might have a created time for the contact, but when that contact first, you know, engages with us, that might not be the right time to send a proposal or to talk about how we can work together. And so we're going to track that opportunity separately from the contact for that reason as well. Now, beyond that, what we want to do here is set up some uh, very specific uh, fields and tables that are gonna track against that opportunity so that we can send an email at the exact right time to follow up on this opportunity. So a couple of things that we want to uh, bring in here. First and foremost, we wanna have a pause button. Now the pause button is what we're gonna hit if we need to stop or pause the automation email sequence. There are a number of reasons for this. The, uh, you know, the prospect might reach out and say, hey, we don't want uh, any, you know, we're not interested. Or maybe they say we are interested, but, uh, you know, we need uh, another two weeks before we are ready to bring that in and make that uh, adjustment internally. A number of reasons that this could happen. Just those are just a couple examples. But the bottom line is if somebody wants to opt out and you don't want to continue to send them those emails, you better have a way to stop that from happening. So the pause button is great. We just need to click this button. And ideally what would happen is these emails would not send to them. Now, a couple more simple ones. You'll see I'm using a lookup field to bring in the contact email and also a lookup field to bring in the first name. Now, what this is doing is it's looking at the linked relationship in this case, Isaac Newton, and it's bringing back the first name that's associated with this contact on the other page. Similarly, we're bringing back the uh, contact email in the same way. And so using that, we are going to be able to send this email and uh, address them by name in the email. Now, the other two points of data that we're tracking are the hours since created and we're tracking date closed. And the reason for this is if we close an opportunity, let's say, for example, uh, Carl Gauss says, yes, I'm ready. And he buys on on nine two. When we mark this as closed, 
we don't want to continue to send him follow-up emails. Similarly, we're also tracking hours since created because we want to have some sort of trigger that sends these emails at a specific time. In this case, we're doing an, uh, an email example at 24 hours after the opportunity. So, you know, one day later. The way we write this formula is as follows. We do a date time underscore diff, and we are tracking the difference between two times now, and that is respective to this moment, and then the date created field. That's the second parameter here. And we want to output the difference between these two times in hours. So let's take a look at this. So if we see here in this example, uh, we are imagining that this was created on 9-1 at 8.14 a.m. And at my current time, it's 9-2 at 8.21 a.m. And so this output is 24, 24 hours ago. Now this is critical, this whole formula is critical because this is going to be the trigger that brings things into our specific view. So let's take a quick pause here and talk about what the automation is going to look like. The automation is going to be watching our specific view called email number one. And when a new record appears in this view, it's going to send out whatever email we have written for that specific instance. So in this case, we're going to take a look at email number one and let's look at these very specific filters. So we have a filter that says that the pause field must not be checked. This is, of course, how we stop something. So if we wanted this to not trigger, we would click on this and pause the email campaign. The other thing we need to see is that date closed is empty, right? Date closed being that date where we are tracking uh, if the opportunity uh, became a, a paying client. And so if there's any data in that date closed, we don't want this to fire off. And then the last piece, again, is that hours since. And so we're looking at the hours since created field and we're saying that it must equal 24. And that is what brings a, a new record into this view. And once a record appears in this view, we're going to have an automation send out an email. Now you can imagine that you could have any number of views uh, that would be set up to do the very same thing, except that you'd be changing the hours since created time. So in this case, it's 24. Maybe you have a second email follow up at 48 hours and a third email at 72 hours or something like that. All right, so let's jump into Zapier, take a quick look at what this automation would look like. So we are going to trigger on a new record in a view. Specifically, we're looking at the base, the opportunities table, and we're, again, we're looking at that specific view, in this case, email number one. Now, when we see a new record in here, and we would, of course, expect to see that Isaac Newton example, uh, which we do. So when we see a new record in here, and let's go ahead and continue, we would send an email to this, uh, to this person, and we can bring that information in here. So let's go ahead and bring in the contact email to step uh, in step two. And we could just write a very simple uh, email here. Give it a name, just following up, or a subject. And in here we can say hi and bring in the first name. I mean, you could imagine, of course, a much better email than that, but here's an example for us. And that's it. So now every time a new record appears in this view, this email is going to send out. And from our perspective as, as you know, sales reps or business owners, all we need to do is manage this pipeline and pause or update with dates closed, and the emails will take care of themselves on the back end. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.